place. Come on, lose your mind in this place. Oh, praise his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, bless the Lord in this place. Oh, ye gates, lift up the name of Jesus in this house on today. I promise you, if you lift him up, hallelujah, he'll fix you up. Come on, bless the Lord in this place. Magnify him in this place. Shabak him in this place. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. You got the victory because you are a healer. I thank you because you are a way maker. I thank you because you are a promise keeper. I thank you. Hallelujah. Because hallelujah, the battle is not mine. It belongs to the Lord. Come on, give God praise. Come on, shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't have pity, but I got a praise in my belly. And I want to tell God thank you. And I want to tell God, oh, somebody praise him. Somebody shout. Hallelujah. 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 I need to know if God's been good to you. Go on and give God a praise. Go on and magnify him. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Come on, you watch it live. Oh, Just yeah, put Lord. down, he's good. Somebody shout, he's good. Even when I'm surrounded by my enemies, he's still good. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's still good. He's still good. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Father, as you're moving in, I'm asking God that you will embody. Come on, somebody. Embody your people. Cover us with your presence. Cover us with your presence. Make known your might and your power in this place today. There's nobody greater, God. God, I turn my back on my strongholds. And I focus on the Lord. This is my turning point. This is where I break that stronghold. This is where I make a difference. This is where I give my all to God so that He can fill me up. This is where I empty, empty. God said, You must empty out. Woo! God is looking for some empty people. People that don't mind emptying out. Take off all that weight. Take off all that weight. When you don't even expect it. God said he'll throw his weight around in your place. He'll throw his weight around in your situation. He'll move on your behalf. He'll come in the hospital room and change the diagnosis. He'll come in the courtroom and say, not guilty. He will, he will. He, he, he. Till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run. Point to yourself. I want to run over. 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 I want to run over
softly. God said, you're going to overflow so that your children can be blessed. So that your grandchildren can be blessed. You're going you're gonna to get that overflow until people call you blessed. See, when we were singing that song, I was thinking of anybody want him to fill your life today? Listen, 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 listen. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lived. All I want, all I want, you to be glorified. You do be lifted. Look, 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 look. I, I, I want to share something. I want to say this with you. I'm going to share something with you. That's remarkable. My grandson is three years old. I'm thinking about a couple months here before. And every time I dress him and I take off his shirts. I say, now remember when your hands go up, tell God thank you. And so every time he lift up his hands when I'm putting on his shirt, I said, now what you going to do? He said, thank you, Jesus. He lifted high all I want. Come on, things begin to happen when you just want him to be glorified. You, for you to be glorified. Yeah. For you, you to be lifted high. Oh, Look, while you're standing, there's a move of the Holy Spirit in this place today. Hallelujah. Somebody's about to get an overdose because God is not only going to fill your life, He's going to cause a spiritual. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. Come on, just praise him. I just need to hear praise. I just need, I just need for you to praise God in this place. 
God said he can hear you through your mask. Come on, just praise him. We glorify you, Lord. We worship you, Just Jesus. praise him. Hallelujah. I get finished waiting. I'm going to get my strength back. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I just, I just, I just want, I just want just for a moment that Jeff, if you would play something on that Hammond organ that would hit our spirits and knock us off our feet. I just feel God just, just, just speaking to me to speak to you. Hallelujah. Play something on there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Oh. Gonna reach everybody in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor Hibbler. Come on, come on, come on. We want those sweet melodies. Oh. Oh. Come on, just let it. Just let God move everything out you. Just lift your hands. Just stand. Now while he's, while, while they're, while they're ministering to us right there, Psalms 150 says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Come on, make a sound of victory. Make a sound of joy. Make a sound of voice of triumph. Come on, yell like you lost your mind. Somebody's trying to take your life. There's a wave in this place. There's a wave in your home. There's a wave in this place. There's a wave in your home. I feel a domino effect. I feel a domino effect. God said, don't turn the switch off. He said, because if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. God said, just lift them in this place. He's going to draw your sons. He's going to draw your daughters. He's going to draw your grandchildren. If you would just lift him in this place. Lift him in your homes. Somebody give God a praise right now. Come on. Whew. Everybody left. I left here and I, by the time I got back, everybody was gone. I was doing a couple of things. I was looking, uh, trying to fix some things. And, and I came back here to get some tools I needed to take to where I needed to go to. After I did what I um, got back here. Got kind of discouraged, got kind of dis uh, disappointed. What I was going to do, it was going to take two men. But I was able to do it on my own I, because I was the only one here. And I kept saying to myself, send her away. Send, I, just, I, just, I just didn't because I, I was here by myself. And I didn't want anything to look unrighteous because I talk to y'all all the time about counseling the opposite sex because you don't want something to be said that's wrong. Amen. And when she was standing there, somebody dropped her off here and it caught me off guard and she began to talk about her experience on walking the streets and how people are misjudging her. 
Her biggest problem is that she want a relationship back with her mother. So I, I was asking God to fix her broken relationship. She said, I'm pregnant and everybody, don't nobody want me around no more. I said, who do you most feel safe around? And she said she feel safe when she's around Ricky. And y'all, y'all probably know, y'all, y'all know Ricky. And I said, well, she said, anything can be said. So you know that God, son of here for that prayer, she left, she went her way, and I'm still praying for her in her situation, her, her, her unborn child. And when she come back here again, look, I, I want you women to really embrace her and speak to her heart because I can't do that. I can only pray and 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 intercede. And, and, and I, I, I was saying to myself, I wish one of the women stayed like next door to this church, and I can. God's hand is on your shoulder. Somebody give God praise right now because I believe that this young lady is going to be saved. God gave me a word for her before she left. I said, "Look," I said, "I want you to remember this: that before you have this child, you will have your own house." You won't, you won't have to worry about paying your bills because God is going to take care of everything. That's saying that you're not going to be living in the house for free. That's saying that God's going to get you the job that you need to get the house. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Where I am right now, I thank God for where I am right now. I am above and I'm not beneath. I'm the head and I'm not the tail. I thank God for where I am. Because, Minister Harris, because where I've been, where I've been, honey, where we've been does not define where we are at right now. now you're about to get your healing come on come on come on come on I, I just feel I I feel that overflow and a breakthrough right now thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. 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 It could have been me. It could have been me. It could have been me. Nothing is the same. Everything is changed. For me. You know, you know, you know, I said, Lord, I don't want to go in until I take care of this. I want to try to fix this. I want to try to get this done. And so I'm trying to fix this. I'm trying to put this clamp on this thing and I'm trying to fix it. But my hand is too big. And what I was trying to fix, it was too hot. My hand was too big and it was too hot. And I said, Lord, I don't want to quit until I get this done. 
And then my little cousins. And so immediately I drop. You just got to drop. Hey. It's in your hand. And so I said, you know what? I dropped my tools. Closed the door on the thing. Shut the hood. Dropped it. And walked right on up in the church and said, what's the problem? And immediately, somebody say, immediately. immediately. Hallelujah. The problem was solved just like that. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you something. God said I had to get you to drop that before I can get. I was there but now I got my joy back Woo! hallelujah until you learn how to drop it it's going to be a joy stiller it's going to be a deal breaker until you learn how to drop it it's going to be a deal breaker if you drop it Woo! seven years One more person had a birthday that I know of. That was my daughter, Faith. Somebody give God praise. 26 years old. That's the last time I'm going to tell you. She's 26 years old. Because you women, y'all are personal about your age. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when you're young like that, you'll celebrate your birthday the week before. Or the... Or Come on, give God praise. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Keep standing. Keep standing. I'm going to show you something real quick. Keep standing up. Keep standing up. Right there. Right there where you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was here. I said to myself, Minister Harris, you started this men's prayer breakfast. Let's give God praise for that. Sunday, I'm going to give him a hundred dollars. So before you leave, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars. If, if, I don't know how many, I think it was about eight of them. If eight of them would have came today, I would have gave each one of them a hundred dollars. But because you came, I'm going to give you that hundred dollars. Somebody give a praise. Come on, bless God in this place. Come on, bless God in this place. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. Let's give God praise. Now, everyone standing of the direction of the usher, we're going to do this real quick in, in blessing. When y'all bring your offering up, even if you touch this basket, I want you to just yell hallelujah. When you put it in there, just say Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Why you standing there? Why you standing there? Why you? Let me get that basket right. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. While you're standing, while you're standing, while you're standing, while you're standing. Mm. I want, I want to read, I want you to repeat after me. We're going to do our scripture for this morning. Shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Somebody says mine. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Touch this basket in faith that, God, that you may have your way in our lives. Now, God, I'm asking that you will give us increase, multiply us, some 30, 40, 60, and 100 fold. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. While you're standing, while you're standing, you, amen, going to touch it, going to touch it. Amen, going to touch it. Amen, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for that. Tory, when I'm gone, I want him to enlarge it with my grandchildren. My great grandchildren, my great 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 grandchildren. I want them to look back and see my picture on the wall and say, He started it, and I'm not finished yet. I'm gonna keep this thing going through generations. Lord, enlarge my territory. Somebody say, Lord, enlarge my territory now won't god do it hallelujah they'll, they'll hover right in place and they will be pecking at the flower they'll be right in we'll get right to the announcements come on come on while, while i'm talking but the other day i was in a traffic jam and there was an eagle Waiting till the cars leave, hovering over, over some food that somebody threw out the window. Just hovering, just hovering in place, just flapping his wing. Every time he falls a little bit low. He Ministers, deacon, and deaconess class is every first Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, also, um, oh, I don't have a whole lot of announcements. Um, the fundraiser, um, our next fundraiser will be a chili sale on Sunday, February 27th. I'll have prices for you um, at a later date. The food pantry also, it used to be open every Tuesday, but now it's going to be open the second and the fourth Tuesday from noon to 2 p.m. Um, but if somebody is in need of food or anything like that, they are still welcome to come um, as long as they come before 2.30. Um, Praise the Lord. I just want to thank all the men that came out yesterday. It was more than we thought. It was really a blessing day yesterday to see all the youth, young men came out. And we all got something out of it yesterday. And the food was good. We cooked just enough, a little bit over. But I want to thank Brother Alec for bringing them young brothers out yesterday. He traveled to the south side. Give, give a hand praise back mm -hmm. for digging, digging Alec right there. And I just want to thank Pat for letting us utilize the kitchen. And uh, cooked some good food yesterday. Any guests? If so, would you please stand? I'm glad to see so many youth in the house today.
I didn't prepare a Black History Moment, but I want to say to you guys, if you want to do a Black History Moment next Sunday, let me know, and um, we'll have you do it during, um, during announcements, okay? If any of you want to do it. Um, these are your announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. your grace that I made it this far for the rest of my existence Lord I want to be wherever you are please Jesus it's a cold world Lord don't leave don't leave me alone They're going to be doing a tag team on today. Hallelujah. And I, I, I feel, I, I, I think, you know, what you, the way, I think, I thank God for the ministers and leaders that are getting the opportunity to go out and minister in other ministries and speaking to other people. Come on, those of you who will, who, who did come to give the devil hell, come on and stand to your feet. Come on and stand to your feet and act as if you know that God is going to give him hell, but how we praise God is how we fight our battle. If there be one or two, just one or two, that's all we need. Hallelujah. Lord, that the people would hear from you today, Father God, that we would leave this place, Father God, Lord, ready to do everything, sacrifice whatever it is that takes us away from, Lord, being in you. 
that we will move forward how you want us to move forward that we will have unity in this church father god that we would all do everything that you have called us to do and it would all tie into everything that you have for the ministry we bless you and we honor you in jesus name amen Go with me real quickly. I got a lot of scriptures, but I'm going to just give you this first one. Just go with me, please. Not quite. <laughs> God said, let us make man in our image. You may be seated. <clears throat> and God said, let us make man in our image. Son, deuce, come hither. <clears throat> so since the beginning of time, God, God has sought out to have a relationship with us that is unparalleled by any others. There's no other relationship that can be on the level of the relationship that God has called us to. <clears throat> Psalm 8, 4 through 9 tells us that he is so concerned with us, he gave us authority over his creation and made us his representatives on the earth. If we go over this in depth, we find it to be more than just a glance across the surface. So I say it real simple, right? And I was setting y'all up because it's not that simple. It's only simple if you look at it that way. It's not something that you can glance at and see what God was doing unless you really get into it. All right. God said, let us make man in our image. A quick glance at this would conclude that God was simply saying, let him look like us. Pretty look. Y'all see that? Right. <clears throat> let them have char characteristics like us. Okay? Yet we must think from a view of reverence to the one true and living God who is way above out my portfolio as I'm showing it to them. Say, here, look at this. And they'll take something out because they like it so much and they keep it. And then you'll find it circulating around the school and people saying, look what this dude drew. And they show you your picture and he then erase your name because he saw it on there and he wanted to make it his. Well, how many of you know this, that's the same story that's going on right now? Okay? Now, I told y'all the guy signed his name, right? Okay, so every single strand of, of human DNA has God's name on it. How many of you knew that? All right, y'all knew that? All right. Well, for those of you who did, number break it down. Okay, so there are bonds called uh, nucleotides that hold strands of DNA together. Now, these bonds occur after the tenth pair, again, after the fifth pair of bonds, after the sixth pair, and once more after the fifth pair. So that's ten, five, six, and five. Right? You look at the Hebrew alphabet, the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Yod, which is a Y. Okay? The fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is He, which is H. All right? Then the sixth letter is Vav, which is a V, which later evolved to a W. And the fifth letter again is He. Okay? Those of you who don't know, the mimics a Jewish marriage. All right? From the beginning to the end. Okay? Let's talk about that. In the beginning, there's what's called the betrothal. The betrothal is like the engagement, okay? So it's where somebody has figured out, I like her, and she like me, and we're going to do what it takes to get together. But there were certain things that have to be done. So uh, the ketubah, or the mohar, is the contract slash negotiation price. I'm going to say that part again because somebody might not have caught it. The negotiation price. What does that mean? There's a negotiation on the price, meaning this young lady was going to be paid for. You were paying for her to be set aside. That means he can't come and get with the one that I was looking at because I set her aside for me. When he got with her, he set her aside, right? So God is doing the same thing with us. We'll get into that in a minute. I just want to go through the list first. Um, then there comes the commitment where she's set aside and set apart for him. And as a symbol of commitment, they drink wine. Does it sound familiar yet? La Communion, something like that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so when, we, when we're when doing communion, we should be thinking about that. But if they told you it was an imminent threat, you had to take it off your shoulder. Hold it down like this. Because if somebody comes, I'm coming up, and when they come up, I'm letting loose. All right? But an imminent threat meaning it was right there. Well, it says the bride had to be ready for the groom's imminent return. Now, did that mean he was coming back tomorrow? Nope. But in her head, he could. So what did that mean she had to always do? Be ready. Thank you. All right. So, she don't know when he's coming back, but she knows he is coming. So she be ready. Then the groom comes. Now, when he comes, she don't know he's coming. 
Okay? So he didn't come by himself. He came with an escort of all the other men who were going to come with him. And guess what the other men's job was to do? They were yelling and shouting, here he come! Here he come! You better get ready. If you ain't got to stop, you better, here he come! That was their whole job. He coming! He up the street, he about two blocks away! That was their job. It might sound crazy, but I guess, I, I, I tell you what, I bet she, when she heard it, she was excited and she was getting herself together the way she was supposed to. And then they had a surprise gathering, a celebration. A celebration. That's, that's the way it went, right? So as we look at the marriage fulfilled, we cannot omit the fact that there's a villain in the story. A villain in the story. Now, I think we all can figure out who the villain is, right? This villain, this ain't his first time trying to break up a the genetics. The genetics. So God said, you know what? Now I drew this picture, and this was a wonderful picture. And you then came down here and jacked it up. And he sent the water. What the water do? Wash the whole canvas off, except for the pieces of paint that he wanted to keep. Only the people that was in that ark made it, right? Everything else got washed clean away, right? Because my genetics is in this thing. I'm going to save enough of this genetic. I'm going to have it replenished so I can get my paint back the way it need to be. I'm going to save these colors because I know this is the color I want to put back in there. My genes is going to be in this man that I created and nothing you do is going to be able to mess it up. So I'm going to go back. And this time, God got on a knee. And in Deuteronomy, if you look in there, you see all them rules. He got on his knee and he said, look here. He go, everything I need you to do. He go, everything I need you to not do. I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people to the cross. Now, Jesus came as the one who would be the one for our negotiating price. But he was also our lawyer. Hmm? Remember, we said God had uh, dual. Okay. He, he, he does many things. He could do one thing and he do a whole lot of things with that one thing. Right. Christ being <laughs> that one thing, it made him come in, be our lawyer in our negotiating price. And what happened was all of the laws and all of the rules and everything that was so difficult for us to obtain and to hold and to do and this, that, and the other. He said, you know what? When you go on this cross, we're going to have you die for some stuff that some of them ain't even born yet. We weren't even born yet. And he was dying for sin that we were going to do. He was negotiating a price for things that we were going to do. When somebody come in here who we think got a, 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 a look about them that ain't what we think should be, we should make them sit in the back. Because we're doing the work of the Lord, they should have some seats up front. Why? Because you the guest. You what we came here for. You who we came here for. And if nobody comes in that who's like that, that we need to sit across the front, then we need to get in our vehicles during the week because we got recharged, right? And we go out there and get them. All right? So... Good job, bro. But we need have a prayer breakfast during the week, too, if that's what we got to do to get him in here. You know, <laughs> for real. Say he was going to his father's house, right? Right? Okay? That means we are set apart. Our everyday should be an outward manifestation of our inner preparation. I'm going to say it again. Our everyday should be an outward manifestation of our inner preparation. Our mind must be on the groom's return. The kingdom comes. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27 says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it in a place where I'm not ready. And it wasn't that he wasn't willing to wash me. It was that I was not willing to stay clean. Stay clean. God then gave you the soap. He didn't gave you the shower. He gave you the water. He gave you everything you need. There's some fresh towels in the cabinet in there. He started telling you everything you need is right there. I cleaned you up. Stay clean. But what are we doing? Like pigs. We going and jumping in the mud and we rolling in it. And, but we, he going to come. But until he get here, I'm just playing this mud. Because we too busy doing God's work. The problem is we ain't doing God's will because 
The church is not moving how it's supposed to move. It's not maneuvering how it's supposed to maneuver. Why? Because there are pieces. Come on, if you go to the doctor and they tell you you fractured a foot, or they tell you that something happened to something, uh, this happened or that happened, or this or another, they can break down to every little thing that happened. They tell you something about the spine, they'll tell you the number. Uh, Vertebrae number five, vertebrae number two, and vertebrae number three all not working the way they're supposed to work. All right? Ask God in your prayers. Lord, is it me that's making the church not move the way it's supposed to move? When he gets up and say, I don't want it just to be me and first lady. You taken care of and you back here being dirty. He got his arm up saying they're good and you behind the arm of justification saying I'm just going to jump in this mud again stop jumping in the mud alright so when we get to communion communion should be taken with a mindset that realizes that the bridegroom is returning to a bride who has looked forward to his return and is sanctified since the bride was bought with a price we don't want to keep crucifying him over and over again by being unsanctified and living any kind of way First Thessalonians 4, angels got the voice, you're going to hear it. Not just you, but the people next to you, the people over in China, the people in Russia, the people up under here, the people up over there, the people up twixt there. Everybody going to hear it, right? But that ain't just it. That ain't just it. Say so he's also, okay, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. The trump of God. Now, the trumpet of God ain't like any other trumpet, all right? Because they played the trumpet in the movie, what's that, Mo Better Blues? Okay? But, but the trump of God do some more better things because this trump is going to make people who dead be able to get up. Huh? Jesus told Lazarus, come forth. God trumpet. Man, I went through some last week, but you know what? We both can, we can keep looking at the God that's coming back. We good. I need y'all to understand this. The enemy is deceitfully and craftily trying to take God, your creator's name, off of you and place his on you. Open your ears and open your eyes. And when I say that, ask the Lord to open your spiritual eyes, your spiritual ears. Because there's some of us who think we got it together and we're not hearing God say stuff because we get up and we listen to everything else first. Stop listening to this music. Um, that's my jam. All right, jam. You're going to be jammed up because you're listening to everything. And it was designed to be deceiving to you. It was designed. Now, listen to me. I told you that God is very skillful in what he does. Oh, I could do like 400 other songs, but um, we're going to just take that one. Oh, man, look, as a teacher, I ain't never wanted to put some kids in the head like you ain't no savage. Sit down. So tough and then be crying because it's cold outside tomorrow. Where the savage go? I... <laughs> no, you didn't. And it, it's not just the music. I ain't never in my life in a day and time seen so many people who can watch what they want to set aside say what I want to say set aside I'm going to church on Wednesday I'll be alright that is nice I say how nice is it did you read it it say forgive it say love it say repent real big with some blood on it not my blood, not your blood, but his blood. Repent. Because his blood paid for you with a price. But right at the bottom, it say 180. What that mean? I tell you, I, I bet if I do this, y'all going to figure it out. This is 360. Y'all ready? Be in the same bed. Husband might get gone and wife might get left. Wife might get gone, husband might get left. Somebody on, on the roof. 
Say you might well gonna stay up on that roof because you ain't even, don't even come down. Don't even waste your time. Will you marry me? Will you marry me? We ain't talking this new age thing where you already got your divorce paper wrote up before you get married. Yeah, yeah, I know that don't don't nobody write those. But if you're telling yourself, if he do this, if she do this, if she do that, I'm done. You wrote your divorce papers before you got married. Done. So he said, Lord, this ain't about me. It's high time that we repent and get about our father's business. Think everything that you saw Jesus do in his three and a half year ministry. When he said, it's about my father, he didn't do nothing but everything that the father told him to do. When you saw him, even when he got ready, he wanted to check a few people. <laughs> I'm here to do the will of my father. <laughs> huh? A couple thousand, I bet if y'all, if y'all don't pay attention to it, you missed it. It was times where they were coming in there and they were trying to lay hands on Jesus, going and arrest him. We have to have the word in us and the word is with God and the word is God. If you tell me you got God and you ain't got his word, I doubt it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying because every temptation that comes to you, you're going to fall. And that's going back and forth. So let's not go back and forth. God has asked, will you marry me? If you're saying yes, live a life that says you're set aside and do what thus says the Lord. Amen. Verse 1. Yes, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. I said, what now? Nah, there were five foolish? Are you serious? And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise did what? Took oil in their vessels with their what? Lamps. Glory to God in the highest. Uh, the bridegroom tarried. They all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, it's something rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom did what? Came. And they that were ready, and they that were slothful, though, those who were sitting on the sidelines, expecting them to come, uh-uh, those that were ready, it says, and they that were ready went in w with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Oh, my God. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, verily I say unto you, I know you not. To check the people of God to see if you're really living for Christ. A lot of us come into the house of God week after week, Sunday after Sunday, and I say, I'm ready to meet the king. We're shouting and praising God. We're jumping all over the place. God, I'm ready to meet the king. But it says in the preparation period, it says the kingdom of heaven. Where's the kingdom of heaven? Jesus told his disciples, he said, they're going to come say, say to you, Anointing. Because the anointing adorns the bridegroom. I love when he was talking about that. How the marriage preparation in the Jewish custom. Because I read that myself. Because in those customs, they, they were making preparations to meet the bridegroom. So the bridegroom, he didn't come when you expect him to come. He comes unannounced. But when he comes, the people who recognize his identity begin to cry, hey, the bridegroom's coming. The bridegroom's coming. Come on, let's meet him. My God, my God. But it says, the five took oil, the fool, because now he has come and made himself ready to meet his bride. But one day I think about it, that God is coming back. Jesus Christ, when he comes, he said, it's your lamp going to be trimmed and burned. Are you going to be like the foolish didn't have enough oil and your oil ran out? Are you going to be like those who slept all through the 
God tonight. Then make preparation. Then get ready. Then fast and pray. Then seek the face of God. I get stirred up on messages like this. Because one of these days, he gonna come. I know you can spare some for me, just a little bit for me, so I can see too to get to the bridegroom. Can you give me some of your oil? The wine said, we only have enough for us. Only got enough for me, pastor. Those who connect to me, I have enough oil to spare for the ones connected to me. So my five that's connected to me, we have enough oil to make ourselves be able to walk. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. So as the word begins to orchestrate my step, I can walk in the light of truth. Come to you. But Lord, I prophesied in your name. But Lord, I preached in your name. But Lord, I witnessed in your name. And Lord, I gave it to the poor in your name. He gonna look at you and say, your works are in vain. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Because I never knew you. So the wife says, you go to the marketplace. I can't help you anymore. Because you should have been ready when you had the time to get ready. See, God going to look at some of us in here today, say when the time was right. I remember Jesus telling, he's telling his disciples, would well, change my destiny. And God, I'm calling on your name right now. Because I want to be ready when you come back. I don't want to be one of those sitting back, sleeping in the sideline. Saying I should have did it, but I didn't. And now I want to and I can't. But God, I hear your voice calling us. Saying, get your house in order. Get your children in order. Get your families in order. Get the church of God in order. Because God coming back for a bride without a spot or wrinkle. He's not coming back for a people who've been slipping and tipping and dipping. He's not coming back for a church who loves the Lord with all their heart, their soul, their mind, their strength. Everything about you needs to be committed to the cause of Christ. I don't know about you today, but my soul is happy. I told God... Don't keep you in captivity. God said I broke those chains when my son died on the cross. I broke those shackles where you can leap for joy. You can praise my name. God said the thing that you thought will keep you in depression. I lift your head with joy and so away from sorrow. I gave you a garment of praise that on the inside you can praise the Lord in the midnight hour. On the inside. I can pray the Lord when all hell break and lose in my life. On the inside, I can tell myself, Self, we're going to praise the Lord. Self, we live our way long enough. But today, God, I made off the sin was so strong in your heart. It was so stuck in your belly. You were like stuck in a quick sand, sinking in the sands of time. And God says, you didn't know what to give your life to me. You oppose me long enough. I want to be one of those. Where God says, come on. I paid the price. In that area of your life. In that area of your life. Yeah. The things you thought would never break off your life. Think about it. When the bridegroom comes. For that bride. Are you going to have unforgiveness in your heart? Are you going to have bitterness in your heart? Are you going to have hatred in your heart? Jealousy and backbiting in your heart? But he said no. Because the blood, hallelujah, the blood paid the price that you can, I can be free from all sins and accusations of the devil. So don't let your weaknesses be your excuse for not being convicted to change. Because the blood of Jesus paid the price for you and I can take our weaknesses, our sinful habits, our addictions, and our troubles and lay it at the cross and say, God, 
Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here am I to say, Therefore, if any man, woman, boy, and girl be in Christ Jesus, there is now no condemnation because he paid the price. Won't you stand out of the room? Jesus. God, I thank you. I thank you for the ultimate sacrifice. When we were in imminent danger, when we were at the verge of losing our minds, ready to give our minds from the mind of the world to the mind of Christ, that you purge our hearts, purify your people by the blood of the Lamb, sprinkle clean water upon us, God, from the Word. That would change our destiny. And I thank you, O oh God. And I ask, Lord, that you forgive us for our sins. Our times we failed to trust you and walked away from your truth. Feel softly while y'all singing that. I want you to lay your hands on yourself. Father, right now. I pray that you touch your people from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Meet every need in their life right now. I don't know what they need is, but God, do you know? Go into their hiding place, God, and pull that one thing out. And we need to be that the bride and groom may be able to see us in a dark place God I pray that God even as we're touching ourselves and holding and laying hands on that pain that issue we turn our attention to pray for somebody that needs it that's not here meet their need wherever they may be at right now in the mighty name of Jesus as you continue to heal and give breakthroughs, I want you to repeat after me.